about two to three minutes for everyone to join in. We'll give it about two to three minutes for people to join in then, and then we'll get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Impressive. We are at 212, 222, 228, 237. Number's going up. I'm going to wait until the number of participants starts to settle down, and then we'll begin. All right, we'll get started in just a few minutes. I'm going to pull up my screen so we can be ready. All right, is everyone able to see um, the presentation? Okay. Got a load of yeses in the chat. Perfect. <laughs> All right, we have 376 people on the line. It is 1.03 p.m. Let's get started. Um, I wanna thank you all for joining today. This is very exciting, one of a kind, first sort of event that we're doing called Hire Together. The idea is for a huge group of partners, employers, training partners, colleges, career centers to get together and put on an event for the community, especially during our difficult time that we're all facing. We're all sitting at home. Um, don't let my background fool you. I'm not in San Francisco. I'm actually sitting in my room in Fremont, California. But um, I want to thank you all for joining today. Uh, Hire Together is put together through four main organizations, uh, Bay Area Council, Ohlone College, Bay Area Community College Consortium, and the Silicon Valley Leadership Group. Uh, my name is Harshdeep Singh Nanda. I'm an employer and entrepreneurship advisor at Ohlone College, and I will be the MC for today's event for the first hour. Um, a few um, you know, uh, points just to make for today's event. The first hour, we will be having um, a few introductions, four-minute presentations from each employer. So, yes, it will be tight, but we do want to get you some general overview, general information on each employer. And then we'll be moving into the second hour, where each employer will have their individual room. Um, you all have been provided a link, um, which leads you to a PDF, which has specific Zoom slash other WebEx links, where you can join these individual rooms. You can hop in and out as you please. You can ask questions. We have a moderator from one of our partner uh, partners in there, so you can send questions to the chat and you can uh, have your questions answered. I do also want to let you know um, we do have a resume collection for each employer, so please be sure to submit your resumes. That is very valuable. Um, definitely something the employers love to see. Um, it's a great way to get your you know information out there. So I do want to emphasize, um, please check your emails. If any of you do need the link to that um, or, or any links, um, I'm sure Carrie or some one of our partners can share. Uh, but I will move on. I do want to thank everyone for joining today. Um, so I want to thank, first of all, our partners. Um, so I'm going to go through, read the list. Um, it's, it's pretty long, and I'm very proud that it is a long list. So I want to thank Cabrillo College, Chabot College, College of Alameda, CSU Fresno, Evergreen College, Foothill College, Gavlin College, Growth Sector, Hartnell College, Las Positas College, Merritt College, Mission College, Monterey Bay Economic Partnership, National University, Nova, Ohlone College, City College of San Francisco, San Jose City College, San Jose State University, Santa Rosa Junior College, Skyline College, Stanford University, UC Santa Cruz, 
UC Santa Cruz Silicon Valley Extension and West Valley College. Thank you to all of our partners for making this event possible, for helping us get the word out. Um, the webinar that we're using right now, the limit is at 1,000. We have more than 1,000 registrations for today's event, so that is great. Um, so thank you all. I am going to move on to the next slide, and I'm going to thank our employers today. So thank you to Amazon Web Services, Bank of the West, Cisco, Dignity Health, Gillig, Rayleigh's, Rambus, Webcore, Wells Fargo, and Winning Turner for joining us today. Um, so uh, thank you all for joining. I am going to move on. I'm going to make a quick introduction to our team. Um, so from Ohlone College, we have Daniel Newell and myself. From the Silicon Valley Leadership Group, we have David Palter, Sarah Murdoch, Sarah Garcia. From Bay Area Council, we have Henry Bartholome, Leslie Alfaro, and from Bay Area Community College Consortium, we have Carrie Portis. So before we move on to employer presentations, um, I am going to be mindful of time. So we have three minutes. I'm going to share some words and a few of our partners are also going to share, share words. So unfortunately, Daniel Newell was unable to make it today, but he has shared a message that he would like for me to convey. So from Daniel, hello everyone. Thank you for attending the first Hire Together event. I'm sorry I could not be present, but I wanted to thank all our partners for their contribution to making this event possible. I also want to acknowledge and thank the employers for their time. Ohlone will be offering a new menu of services to support your recruitment efforts this fall semester. If you're a student who is attending today's event, I want to encourage you to reach out to the Career Center at your college or university to make sure you're connected to services, resources, and job and internship opportunities. If you're not a student, but you're an alumnus of a local college or university, or you're a member of the community, reach out to the Career Center at Ohlone College and we can connect you to resources in your area. Thank you. So I want to ask Carrie Portis to share a few words. Carrie. Hi everyone, this is Carrie Portis. I am uh, working on a project with the Bay Area Community College Consortium. And the consortium uh, makes up the 28 colleges in the Bay Area. And uh, I am also managing multiple chat uh, messages. So um, just send me questions and we will try to get them uh, taken care of as we go on. Uh, my first message is that we are so glad you are here. Thank you, everyone. Um, the goal is really for us to come together as a region. And um, I want to thank um, everyone who's made this event possible. Um, I also want to um, really commend the students and job seekers that are here. Um, you know, these are obviously really unprecedented times. And um, I'm glad that you're here, that you're putting yourself out. Uh, I know many of you have probably had to overcome many things. Uh, we can all make a list uh, in order to be with us today. And then I also want to thank our employers for coming and being with us today. Um, our hope is that you will get exposed to uh, colleges and programs that you may not uh, know or have connections to or have the usual capacity to recruit. You know, these are strange times and we're having to do uh, challenging things, but there's also a lot of new opportunities and new ways to make connections and to come together. And the last thing as the host of really my first ever webinar and now a webinar that has over 430 people is that from all of us, uh, we just ask for some grace. We've got a lot of moving parts uh, we wanted to put this together quickly to get opportunities and information out to you all and um, to help uh, really grow a local and diverse talent pipeline. Um, but there are going to be a, a couple of hiccups here and there. So send us questions in the chat. Uh, when you go into your employer room, if you need any help, we're going to have hosts there um, to make this easier. And uh, I look forward to our time together. Thank you. All right, Henry, I'm going to ask you to share a few words. Absolutely. Uh, thank you to everyone for being here, uh, especially to our partners throughout the region, educators, training partners, all these great employers you're about to hear from. Uh, we hope this day is an opportunity for students and job seekers to hear directly from employers in the region and help guide you as you're making your next career steps. Uh, and for the employers on the call and the webinar, uh, for you to meet your future talent that's coming right from your backyard here in the Bay Area. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. And please know that the internal team here uh, is a continuing resource for all of you job seekers and students out there uh, as you continue to navigate your career path. We know, like Carrie said, uh, these are 
incredibly challenging and strange times, and we're so impressed by your resilience in the midst of so much uncertainty. And we know you are a very smart and capable workforce. So we wish you all the best and hope this day uh, brings some value to you as you navigate your career search. Thank you all. All right, David. Thanks so much, Harsh, Steve. So we are so proud to be co-hosting this event with our member companies at the Silicon Valley Leadership Group and 25 college, university, and training partners. The number one priority of our education portfolio is to expand economic opportunity and increase diversity in the STEM workforce. And to achieve this goal, we know we need to have programming that is equity forward. So free events rather than just paid and events that bring in diverse planning partners from community colleges and universities to workforce boards and nonprofits. It was important to us that the employers we're featuring here today also be offering living wage jobs for students and job seekers. So employers, thank you for that. And to all of you students and job seekers out there, thank you for joining us today. We hope that this first of its kind event unlatches a door of opportunity that your talent will kick wide open. All right, thank you, David. Um, I'm going to ask um, that we go right away. So I'm going to introduce Cisco, Jessica Singh, and Davina Nguyen. I'm going to pull up your slides, um, and let's hear from you. Thank you. Perfect. Um, while you do that, I'll just go ahead and quickly introduce myself before I begin. Um, my name is Jessica Singh. Um, I'm with Cisco. I'm a university manager, so I work really closely with um, the different universities. So I like to call myself the middleman between Cisco and different universities, um, just to make it short and sweet. But I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so you may ask yourself, why Cisco? As you can see, we have a very diverse executive leadership team with 50% being women. Um, our CEO, Chuck Robbins, advocates for the importance of diversity, um, both internally and externally, so, so much so that Cisco publishes um, its diversity stats on an annual basis. Um, we, as you see on the right of the screen, uh, people love working here on Glassdoor. We were chosen as one of the best places to work. Um, with nearly 20,000 reviews, 95% approve of the CEO, and 87% recommend to a friend to work at Cisco. Um, so when you guys get a chance, check out our reviews um, on Glassdoor. And then on the left, you can see that we were chosen number six um, in 2019 for the best places to work on the Fortune 100 list. Um, and then if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so as you all know, this year has been very challenging for everyone um, with, you know, dealing with COVID-19 um, and just having to shift a lot in our personal lives and professional. Um, so what Cisco's done is uh, Cisco's really all about giving back to the community. Um, so we've leveraged our Cisco uh, technology platform, um, which is WebEx. And um, it has increased during the pandemic um, in the amount of how much it is being used from 14 billion meeting minutes to 25 uh, billion meeting minutes. Um, and also as a company, Cisco has donated millions of dollars in cash to support the pandemic globally and locally. Um, Cisco has, Cisco's employees receive, so Davina will talk a little bit more about this in detail, but um, typically, all Cisco employees, full-time employees, receive um, 40 hours of uh, paid time where you can go and volunteer. Um, but with the pandemic this year, we've been given an additional 10 hours for the year um, to go and volunteer. So we have a total of 50 for the year. Um, and mainly to give back to COVID-19 case uh, causes. And then Cisco also has equipment that has been given to healthcare providers to help out with COVID-19. And then I can't see your screen anymore, actually. Hey, Henry, I'm having issues with my internet. Can you please share your screen and pull up the presentation? I apologize. No worries. Yes, I will do that momentarily here. I apologize for the technical difficulties. No worries. Henry, we're on slot slide eight. Yep, well, I'm working on it here.
All right, let me just catch up on the slides. Okay, you can actually go to slide eight now because I actually just finished that one up. Great. Perfect. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. I'll just wait for that to load. Is that showing up for you there? Yeah, it is. I don't, the slideshow has started yet. It says I'm sharing. I think you may have to press enable editing and then um, show the current slide. Ah, got it. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Oh, I can't. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think you may have to share your screen again. There we, oh, go. There we go. Okay. Okay. Should I just go ahead and just go, yeah, go for just, it? I'm pulling it up here in a second. It's I'll go ahead and just talk to you. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so along with just our pandemic this year, um, you know, as we've all kind of know, we've as a country also faced social injustice. And with that, our CEO Chuck Robbins um made sure to address this issue with our company um and even outside of our company. So Cisco has donated millions of dollars to social and uh, social justice groups. Um, Juneteenth has become, has been identified as a company and corporate holiday for us now. And then Cisco also hosted um, weekly check-ins just to make sure that our company understands the importance of uh, diversity and inclusion. Um, so we can move on to the next slide and I'll pass it along to my colleague Davina to go ahead and talk to those. Hey everybody, um, so just wanted to quickly go over our university program overview. So we have understandably, right, like with the pandemic going on, um, we wanted to just be mindful in regards to requirements. So our minimum requirements um, right now for all Cisco roles are 2.7 GPA or above. 3.0 is encouraged. Um, if you are looking for an internship or a full-time position, uh, you would have to be enrolled in school or you'd have to have the completion of school when your full-time role begins. Um, we do not offer uh, sponsorships at this time. That is subject to change. Uh, just at this time, we do not offer it uh, with the exception of uh, candidates who are getting their master's uh, applying for an engineering role. So what are we hiring for? If you go to our jobs.cisco.com's page, um, we're, right now we're currently hiring for software engineers, hardware engineers, uh, finance analysts, full-time and intern, business analysts, full-time and intern, and then the last two is our marketing specialist, which is an internship position, along with HR. Um, and you can go ahead and go to the next slide. This is something that if you are attending our breakout sessions, we can talk more about. So what can Cisco do for you? So we just wanted to also share the benefits and perks that we are offering. Um, Things that I wanted to highlight, again, is our time to give, something that Jessica mentioned. We had those extra 10 hours this year for the pandemic, but typically it's 40 hours of give back time to any nonprofit organization that you're passionate about. And our interns actually get one day of give back time. It's called our intern give back day that we host in the summer. EAP, our employee assistance program. So this is free confidential counseling. You can get up to 10 hours of free um, counseling with a therapist and then college coach. So this is a free program that you can use um, to talk about your student loan consultation, a repayment process, things like that. Um, and if you are interested in Cisco, we are hiring the roles that I mentioned, but we are hiring for a lot more roles. Um, check us out in the breakout session. Thanks. All right. Hello, everyone. We are five minutes uh, behind, but let's get one oh, call. Sure. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, Blair Hinojosa, uh, Project Director with uh, WebCore Builders. We're a uh, general contractor uh, in San Francisco in the greater Bay Area and throughout uh, California. I want to thank um, SVLG and, and all the others that helped set up this Hire Together event. We're, we're excited to meet a new group of people and uh, look forward to seeing a bunch of you guys in our breakout session. Um, go ahead and jump into the next slide. Uh, so again, like I said, I'm Blair Hinojosa, project director. Um, we have Gina Glasgow with us uh, who helps uh, lead our HR and um, people side of things, as well as a few uh, other individuals who will be in our breakout group. Uh, like I said, we're excited to meet you guys. Um, 
So like I said, we're a general contractor in the Bay Area. We traditionally hired uh, civil engineer and construction management degrees. We are uh, excited to expand um, the education um, fields that we're looking at. So uh, that's part of the reason we're, we're taking part in this group uh, and are excited to expand our pool of employees and um, people who we, we bring in to, to join our family. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, so like I said, we're a, a general contractor in the Bay Area. You can see the map up there in the middle. Uh, we have offices throughout California. Uh, if you spent time in San Francisco or the Bay Area, you've probably seen some of our larger projects, uh, the Trans Bay Transit Center, uh, a lot of work down at SFO um, at the airport, SF MoMA, uh, the Museum of Modern Art in downtown San Francisco. Um, all in all, uh, just over $2 billion in revenue last year, uh, and we're about 1,800 employees, uh, with the majority of them uh, being in the greater Bay Area. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, so a little bit about us, uh, we live by our core values. Um, so we uh, execute uh, bold new buildings. Uh, we innovate through um, new ways to build. We help build in our local communities. Uh, and we look to develop trust with our clients uh, as well as those greater communities. And we're ever looking to perfect our craft um, through everything we do and through the additional core values that we have listed there. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, so we're very proud of our core values and a lot of our core values extend into um, auxiliary things just outside of what it means to be uh, an employee and, and part of the WebCore family. Uh, so we have groups like the Women of WebCore, uh, who's a great group of women who started a group um, to help promote women in construction. Uh, construction is traditionally a predominantly male dominated industry. So we're really excited about um, the group of women that have helped drive that group forward, uh, not only within WebCore, but now within the industry as a whole. Uh, we do a ton of team volunteering. Like I said before, uh, we are very involved in the community. Um, so we do rebuilding together, which is a local um, rebuilding effort um, of a, a local park or a school. Uh, it rotates every year, um, but it's one of our um, big volunteer events each year. Um, we also do fundraisers um, throughout the year to help fund various um, events through the community. And then just to get together and have a good time, we do recreational uh, kind of intramural sports uh, with other teams that are pulled together through um, other people in our industry, whether it's architects, engineers, other general contractors, um, so on and so forth. So we do like to enjoy uh, the community outside of our, our normal day-to-day -day, um, work. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Like I mentioned, uh, supporting diversity and inclusion through construction. So I'm very proud of this, uh, this part. Um, you know, WebCore has a very diverse background. Um, like I mentioned with the women of WebCore, we have uh, done a great job of uh, supporting our local groups to help expand um, the support uh, and inclusion uh, and diversity programs as well. Go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, so for those of you who aren't super familiar with construction, um, what, what does it mean to come into the construction world? Uh, so our entry level position is a, a what we call a project engineer. Uh, and so what you'll do is you will learn how to build. Um, you'll collect data uh, and solve problems. Um, you know, so how come this window can't go here? How come I have an issue installing this light there? So you're really the boots on the ground and know all of the details and have to dig into some of the intricacies of um, what it means to really pull together a big, large scale project uh, and be part of a greater team. Uh, and so in effort to do that, we provide on the job training um, we have a, a boot camp that we put, put together each year called new engineers will build. Um, so as a project engineer, you're um, kind of more in an office slated role, but in the new engineers will build program, we actually put you out in the field with some tools. So you understand what it means to put work into place. And um, with um, the last couple of years, our project engineers that have gone through this, this is one thing that they're really excited about and really love. And it's something that we're really proud of uh, as a development that we've had come together in the last couple of years. Go ahead, go to the next slide. And so what we look for in candidates, uh, we're looking for people with strong work ethic, work ethic and integrity, uh, people who wanna make uh, an impact in our local communities. Like I said before, community being one of our, our core values that we're really proud of. Uh, and looking for intelligent, determined people with an overall positive attitude. Um, community expands, not just to the community we live in, but the community once you come in and are part of that web core family. And so we really wanna look for people who are determined uh, and um, wanna make a, an impact to us internally as well. Go ahead and go to the next slide. 
And that is it. We look forward to seeing you guys in our breakout session. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, Blair. Now we have Amazon Web Services. We have Ryan Long. Is Ryan Long with us? I do not see him. Um, if that's the case, let's move forward to well. I was on mute. Oh, I okay. apologize. Okay. <laughs> oh, no uh, worries. No worries. All right. It's Ryan the girl. It's Ryan the girl. You're looking for a guy. Uh, my <laughs> no name worries. is Ryan Long with Amazon Web Services. We can go to the first slide. Um, I am a recruiting sourcer for the early career talent team. And um, if you go to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit about Amazon Web Services. Uh, everyone has heard of Amazon Retail, Amazon Prime, Amazon Video, Amazon Gaming. Um, and I realize in the Bay Area, you guys may be really familiar with Amazon Web Services, but maybe you're not. Uh, but Amazon Web Services, or AWS, is a cloud computing platform. We offer over 175 services globally, and our customers range from individuals that are using a la carte single services to small startups, to medium-sized businesses, to large enterprises uh, and government agencies. One thing that makes uh, AWS as a service unique is that we have a pay-as-you-go approach to pricing. So our customers really enjoy that because they pay for as much or as little of the services that they use. And um, as we develop new programs and as we, uh, you know, uh, increase services or add new services, we actually adjust our prices down uh, as things get better. So our customers really enjoy that as well. Um, I'm going to spend most of my time here talking about the roles that we're hiring for um, because we have a variety of things that we're looking for right now on my team. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is, um, Amazon as a whole, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 750,000 global employees, and Amazon Web Services has a goal of hiring uh, some 40,000 people in 2020. So um, there's lots of things that we're hiring for. I am just one recruiting team or part of one recruiting team. So while I'm going to cover a handful of roles, there are lots and lots of different jobs at Amazon that could be uh, a fit for you as a job seeker. Next slide, please. So the first... Uh, a uh, group of positions I want to talk about is in our public sector. Uh, we do cloud computing for the U.S. intelligence community, so government agencies, and these positions require that our candidates either have or can obtain security clearance. That also requires that applicants be a U.S. citizen, uh, and any applicants selected uh, can't have used uh, drugs in the past 12 months. It's kind of a weird caveat, but um, we throw that one out there. Um, but these team members are the best and the brightest they come from a really diverse uh, set of folks and they work with a government agency so it does require the ability to to have or to obtain that top uh, secret security clearance for government agencies next slide please we have a Tech U program. So I know that some of you folks in the chat uh, have already graduated. Some of the folks that have submitted resumes to us have already graduated, and that's okay. Uh, we have a Tech U program, and this is a program for uh, recent graduates. So anyone that has gotten their degree between December of 2018 and May of 2020, this is essentially a residency program uh, where you, you get to learn on the job. Um, and you're working as a full-time employee, but you're doing project-based learning. There's a lot of focus on professional development a lot of mentorship and uh, graduates are working directly with our customers to to uh, really find those great technical solutions with our cloud computing next slide please uh, our data centers are really what power AWS. Uh, we have data centers all over the country and all over the world. And uh, the, the program where we uh, recruit interns into our data centers uh, actually uh, takes folks that come in as interns and get a chance to move into full-time positions after graduation and really build a career with Amazon. The two main roles we're recruiting for in the data centers are our data center technician interns and engineering operation technician interns. Those are uh, for folks that are either pursuing an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, typically in a technical role, uh, something like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, something similar to that. These are going to be hands-on roles. These are not roles for people who are writing code or doing software, um, but very hands-on and working with servers, racks, uh, physical equipment that powers the cloud. Next slide, please. 
And uh, speaking of, of writing code, we do have lots of uh, options for our software development engineers. Uh, we have specialized uh, roles that my team recruits for. A lot of those are in gaming, chip development, front end engineering, things of that sort. We do have a wide variety of opportunities for software development engineers. Um, and uh, that's probably our, our most sought after position at Amazon and AWS. Next slide. And then here's a list of, of some additional roles as well. It's not just the ones that I've listed. Um, I actually recruited a lot of network development engineers this past year, supply chain, data engineers, data scientists, um, business intelligence engineers, solutions arch architects. Um, and then we have a few positions for the, the cleared um, for clearance as well. We do accept, uh, we do sponsor visas for some of these roles. So it really just depends on the particular role if you need sponsorship. And next slide. Come build the future with AWS. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys in our breakout rooms. Thank you, Ryan. Um, let's move on to Wells Fargo. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I am Paloma Barraza with Wells Fargo Bank. Thank you for um, hosting this wonderful event and looking forward to meeting um, some of the wonderful candidates in the breakout rooms. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. I think we can move to the next one. Thank you. So here are just some of our accolades um, regarding Wells Fargo um, that we wanted to share with the, um, the greater group today is, you know, we're the 25th top company to work for in the United States via LinkedIn 2019, um, 21st biggest employer in the U.S. Um, from Fortune, um, 14th top company for philanthropy and 21st best company for Latinas. Um, so these are all stats from 2019, just wanting to share um, the great um, statistics within Wells Fargo. So we can move on to the next slide. So here I am with the university um, program at Wells Fargo as a business support associate. Um, just kind of want to give me an idea of what the experience is within our university programs of our internships, both sophomore and junior, and financial analysts or um, program associates is being able to network, industry training, team building, exclusive events, mentorships. Um, so as you can see with networking, there's gonna be the access to having senior leaders across the company joining in, in virtual chats within um, any webinar series that we have within our programs. Um, industry training of benefits of the specialized training that's gonna help you know, build your skills both personally and professionally. Um, team building within your groups or different lines of businesses. Um, you'll have the opportunity to collaborate on various projects within your cohort, um, the exclusive events. Um, given the current world, um, there should be an asterisk right here making it virtual um, since that's the current state we're in, but being able to attend mixers, luncheons, um, networking events. Um, most recently, our last internship class was hosting um, virtual Zoom happy hours with other interns that they participated with in this past um, 2020 summer internship. Um, and then also our mentorships, learning from mentor coaching and um, working with other experienced team members. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in the breakout sessions. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, our financial analyst program within Wells Fargo um, is a wide range of internships and development programs for our undergraduates and postgraduates designed to prepare you for a rewarding and successful career, where we offer a variety of our existing and exciting career paths that will allow you to flourish in an inclusive environment and compromise of other smart, dedicated professionals who are all focused on success. So as you can see here, um, the program lengths for our financial analyst programs for a full time, it's about two to three years. And um, those full time programs would be for existing seniors looking to graduate between December 2020 through June 2021. Um, internships within Wells Fargo, um, sophomore or junior are about 10 weeks in length, um, usually starting within the first week of June um, and usually the third week, depending if a student is this, um, in a semester or a quarter system. They are typically about 10 weeks in length, 40 hour work week. Um, our hiring locations, um, major markets nationwide. So we have opportunities available coast to coast, um, looking to fill within our lending groups of middle market banking, commercial capital, commercial credit, which of course can be discussed a little bit more in depth during our um, breakout sessions as well. But that is what we are here looking for um, to fill our upcoming full-time and internship positions. 
And then of course, joining our team will allow you to work in a fun, diverse environment where you'll gain exposure to the multitude of businesses within the company. Um, if we can go on to the next slide. So I will share this again in our breakout session, but contacts for the financial analyst program are myself, Paloma Braza, and uh, my colleague, Marisa Shimada, who could not be on the call with us today, but wanted to showcase her here. Um, she's um, based in San Francisco, California. I am in Woodland Hills, California. And the next slide. And resources to keep in touch within Wells Fargo. Um, this is just a great um, um, page that we'd like to include to have um, information about our company as a whole within university programs. Um, but a great call out that we you know, want to provide to everyone and that is a free service is joining our webinar series that are happening on a monthly basis. Um, it's great because there's such a broad topics that anyone can join to kind of you know just gain um, better skills, um, learning some stuff about themselves, and um, it's free to anyone to join if you sign up for our talent community through our resources here. And the next slide, I think, is just thanking everyone. So we look forward to seeing you in our Thank breakout you. session. Thank you. Thank you, Paloma. We'll move on to Rayleigh's. So Ryan. Hi, everybody. So I'm Ryan. I'm here with Jackie today. So excited to be here with you all. I'm here for Rayleigh's. So um, just here to talk about the opportunities we have here at Rayleigh's. Um, super excited. A lot of people, when they think about Rayleigh's, they think cashiering or produce and all those kind of things. But we have so many more opportunities than that um, available to anyone. So um, first thing first, we have corporate office opportunities. Um, what those opportunities are, are like customer experience opportunities, sales and merchandising within there as well. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Um, do you mind going to slide eight on the PowerPoint? Slide eight, sorry. You tell me when we're in a big deck, so if you just tell me when to stop, I can get there. Right here? Almost there, yeah. One more. Oh, one more, sorry. <laughs> there you go. So you can awesome. see in our corporate office, we have customer experience jobs available too. So that can be in our stores, as far as how we're giving our guests a great experience inside stores, or that can be online services as well. Um, then we also have sales and merchandising. So what those companies do is they purchase items, make sure we're being at the right rates, um, those kind of things. And then we have information technology jobs, human resources, operations and finance so um, a lot of different opportunities that people don't think about when they think about Rayleigh's as a grocery store we have so many vast opportunities to learn grow develop your skills um, and really make a big impact on our guests too uh, and then also the store opportunities which is on slide four Henry um, a little bit farther backwards it's the one with the grid there you go right there um, so you can see within our stores once again people always just think about cashiering or produce or different um, sales for jobs. We have many more opportunities in store as well. Um, we have leadership roles, as you can see there. Um, each store actually has 23 different um, leadership roles in the store. Um, and a lot of people, when they think leadership roles in, in Rayleigh's, um, they think about, okay, I'm just putting food in the sales for, doing those things. No, as a leader in Rayleigh's, you will um, be analyzing sales numbers and making necessary changes. So you'll be looking at sales numbers and trying to better your sales numbers and find different ways to um, get better. You'll be leading people. Um, so really driving a team, getting results that way. So it's not just all you doing it on your own. You're actually leading people um, and figuring out what people best fit to, using people's strengths and opportunities to put them in positions to succeed and everything too. So if you have great people skills or the ability to collaborate at a high level, this is a place where you could be highly successful as well. Or if you can look at sales numbers at a high level, this is a place where you would be, um, feel like you can grow from and do more from. Um, also in this too, you'll be partnering with other leaders in the store and problem solving. So you'll be partnering with leaders throughout the whole store, trying to figure out um, avenues as far as problem solving, different, different situations as they come up in the store. Um, and then another skill you'll learn too is this the ability to give um, honest and hard feedback too. A lot of times people are afraid to give hard feedback and honest feedback. Um, so here at Rayleigh's, we want to give you what you're doing well, but also ways you can improve. And we will also challenge you to, to do the same for your, for your um, team members as well, teaching you how to give feedback at the right level to make sure that you're helping your team improve 
Um, and these are all skills that are useful in all realms of life, whether it be at home or in another job in the future or future or continue your growth with Rayleigh's. These are all ways you can learn and grow with us. Um, and then um, why join us, you guys? So with Rayleigh's here, I came over from Target seven years ago and why I joined Rayleigh's is just the family atmosphere. Um, you have a support system, you have a family system here, um, and we really wanna take care of you. Um, also with that too, we always strive for our vision to infuse life with health and happiness. So we're always going towards our vision. We're not a company that loses our track or goes a different way every single time. We just opened a brand new store in Truckee that's all organic in order for us to get closer to our vision of infusing life with health and happiness, uh, which is something we're really passionate and thankful for too. Um, and then also why us is just, we have vast amount of opportunity, guys. Like I said, at the corporate office, we have over 350 people that work in the corporate office here in West Sacramento. And then we also have about 12,000 team members um, and 23 like leadership opportunities at each store. So you can do a lot of different things with us here at Rayleigh's. And you'll hear so many stories of people starting off as a courtesy clerk and then making it into a career because um, they find different avenues they enjoy here at Rayleigh's too. Um, so if those sound like opportunities you'd be interested in, you guys, I encourage you to join our breakout room. Um, we'd love to talk to you about more about the opportunities as well as our like, team leader opportunities or even in our corporate office. So looking forward to talking to you more. Thank you, Ryan. Really appreciate that. So we'll move on to Bank of the West. So we have Elijah, Tammy, and Lisa. Yep, so thank you so much for uh, having Bank of the West uh, talk uh, here today. So uh, Bank of the West, we're a San Francisco-based um, organization. And if you go on to the next slide, uh, our CEO, Nandita Bakshi, uh, has been with the bank now for about four years and has completely reimagined and changed Bank of the West um, to where we're at today. Uh, Nandita is a um, obviously a female CEO. She's only um, she's a part of that small group of two percent of female CEOs um, throughout the entire world for large banks. So really proud to to put that out there. Um, her leadership team is made up of thirty uh, percent women. So a uh, huge focus on diversity here at Bank of the West. Some key divisions within uh, the organization are. Our retail banking. So if you think of brick and mortar going into our branch, that falls under our retail banking division. We have our business banking, commercial banking, personal finance, and wealth management. Um, in addition to those positions, uh, we do hire for our uh, summer internship program. So we actually just wrapped up our program uh, for this summer and are opening up applications this fall uh, in hopes of filling our summer 2021 program. Our internship program uh, gives you real life hands-on experience. We make sure that our interns are integral parts of their uh, respective team. So you're not going out there making coffee, picking up anyone's dry cleaning, gone are those days. Uh, you really are gonna get hands-on experience that you could take away um, to your next uh, role or into your future career and hopefully with Bank of the West. So if we go on to the next slide. Uh, Bank of the West, uh, we lead, uh, our daily lives and how we uh, do our work with our values. So we have four values at Bank of the West. We develop, we innovate, we work together, and we care. Uh, there's just some images out there to, to really illustrate um, our core values that we have at Bank of the West. So when it comes to we develop, that really does tie into taking care of our team members, making sure that we are helping train them and grow internally. So we have a huge culture around internal promotion. Uh, we innovate. Um, we're trying to think outside of the box. Um, yes, we're a, a financial uh, industry company, but at the same time, we're trying to compete against the fintechs and uh, really take advantage of the technologies that we're, we're introducing in the banking sector. We work together. Again, uh, we believe in working with one another and partnering across the business lines and, and really um, achieving our goals. And then finally, we care. We give back to the communities that we serve. Uh, that's a picture of us uh, participating in uh, San Francisco Pride in the parade two years ago. If you go on to our next slide. So our key differentiators, what makes us different from any of our competitors? Um, our first uh, key differentiator is our commitment to sustainability. 
So we're true believers that we are a fundamentally different bank than any other bank out there. We believe in sustainability. Uh, bank of the West has the strongest environmental stance than any other bank out there. We actually just introduced a, a product out there um, and we're partnering with an organization where your funds could go into uh, ensuring uh, our environmental stance. Uh, Bank of the West has made a commitment to defund fracking, um, tobacco, and anything else that's bad for the uh, environment. And we're reinvesting that, those funds into small businesses, women entrepreneurs, and sustainable uh, projects. Uh, Bank of the West has a global, global impact. We're part of the seventh largest bank in the world. Uh, Bank of the West is part of the greater BNP Paribas uh, organization. And then finally, talk about the diversity aspect of it. Uh, Nandita, again, is among the 2% female bank CEOs in the world, and 30% of her executive team are women. Um, so we do truly believe in, we believe in redefining banking for a better future. You go on to the next slide. Here's just a quick overview. So this is our retail banking group. Um, depending on where you're at in your career, if you're still in college and, and want a retail branch position, we have plenty of part-time opportunities out there. Um, we have a good handful of branches uh, within the Bay Area. Uh, just to give you some context, Bank of the West is, has 19 states that we're represented in with our branches and 24 states where we have um, some type of corporate office. Um, but going back to our retail banking group, if you're interested in a part-time opportunity, join us in our breakout session where some of my colleagues will talk about these opportunities. I'll talk about um, our internship program. And um, one thing that we do want to highlight here is uh, for all of our employees who have at least six months of, of uh, tenure with Bank of the West, you would be eligible for tuition reimbursement. And we could definitely talk about a little bit more about that. Um, in our breakout session. So we are definitely excited to have you a part of uh, today's career fair and look forward to meeting you today. Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you so much. Um, we'll move forward with Gillig, Christy. And Henry, I think you can switch to the next slide. Christy has one slide. Yep, <clears throat> I just had one slide. So um, I'm Christy Annis. I am a, the recruiter with Gillig. I recruit for all of the corporate functions. Um, I just want to give a little bit of history about Gillig because it was in my own backyard my entire life. I didn't know it existed here in the Bay Area. Gillig is a 130-year-old privately held legacy company. We started in San Francisco making horse-drawn buggies. Eventually, we moved our operations to Hayward, California and morphed into making school buses. We became known on the whole West Coast as the school bus company that made the absolute safest bus to put your child on for school, which of course is always very important for parents. Eventually we realized that if we had our eye on the future and wanted to continue to grow, that we needed to morph into something else, which ended up being mass transit buses. We have now become the number one most dependable, uh, counted on mass transit bus in all of America. We're very proud, especially with all that is going on right now in our world, that we are a manufacturer that has always kept our manufacturing right here. Three years ago, we moved our plant from Hayward, California over to Livermore, built a state-of-the-art plant where everything is still put together by hand, and we are proud to say that it is American-made. There are a lot of things that go into making a product that is considered American-made, and we meet and exceed all of those um, benchmarks for that. Gillig has had a history of, you know, quality, integrity, and um, always keeping their eye on the ball and on the future. So we went from being able to produce eight buses a week in our Hayward facility to now where we can actually do up to 40 a week, uh, 40 a week. It was eight a week before. Now we can do eight a day that turn out of our factory. So, um, you know, green is very important to Gillig and I think um, it's always important to understand the company that you work for. We are still a privately held company by a family, even after 130 years. And I think one thing that has really come to the forefront during this pandemic that we are going through is the fact that Gillig is going through their second pandemic as a company. Um, we've been through two world wars. We've been through the industrial revolution, the great depression, um, you know, again, second pandemic, 9-11, and, you know, we come out stronger out the other side every time, which is why we are currently still hiring, which I think is another, um, one of the core values of Gillig is family first and quality, and it is certainly paying off in times like this that you can see. 
Um, you know, we're dedicated to excellence. Safety is always the top priority for Gillig. We spend a lot of time and money on engineers making sure that our buses are extremely safe and, and even more so now as we're facing all of the social distancing and the things that have to happen. We want to keep not only the drivers safe, but also all of the passengers that get on. Um, we build our buses with lots of pride and passion and integrity. We always do the right thing. And again, I think that's one of the reasons that Gillig has continued to thrive through a 130 year legacy. Sustainability is always at the forefront. So if you want to be involved in a company that is always looking for a way to make things greener, to protect our environment, one of the ways that you can always recognize a Gillig bus is uh, the exhaust that comes out the top of most buses is round. Gillig's is actually rectangular because they realized that it was burning the tops of the trees and it was causing a lot of carbon dioxide to go in. And when it came out, that was more unhealthy. So we, somebody within our team took it upon themselves to one of our engineers to design a diffuser several years ago now, but we still use it on the buses. So that's one way you can always identify a Gillig bus. Before I go into talking a little bit about what we are hiring for currently, I think it's also very important to, to point out the response that Gillig had to COVID-19. Um, and I'm very proud of this on, you know, on the 16th of March when the announcement came down in Alameda County that we needed to um, vacate and stay at home. Gillig sent all of their uh, HQ employees home. We're not a work from home mentality. We haven't ever had that kind of an environment, but uh, people were walking out with their laptops, but most people were walking out with their desktops so that we could continue to work. Of course, the production line, all of our Teamsters and painters could not continue to work that way. They couldn't take the buses home. So what Gillig did, even before the government stepped in, before anything was said, Gillig uh, continued to pay everyone full pay, um, all of their production workers, so that they could stay home, stay whole, and be with their families during this really uncertain time. Uh, and they continued to do that for a full five weeks. When the time did come that the, all of the things happened in government and there was going to be the unemployment benefits, which would keep them whole, they furloughed the employees that worked in the warehouse. So that, and the reason they chose furlough over laying off is that they could continue to still pay their medical benefits, which by the way, is something that they pay 100% of for you and your dependents as an employee of Gillig. So one of the great things about working there, I know as a single mom myself, I came over there, it saved me $5,000 thousand dollars a year because nothing's coming out of my check to pay those premiums. Um, hey, Christy, so we, we will need to move forward in a bit. So oh. if you could just wrap it up. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I had five minutes. So uh, <laughs> no there, worries. Uh, engineers, electrical, mechanical from entry to mid-level. We have a Marcom role that we are looking to fill, a maintenance su supervisor and a sales role. Um, we also have tuition reimbursement, lots of really great events. Uh, Cornhole, Christmas Wonderland, Disney and Ice Company picnics and holiday parties. So um, I think it was the best decision ever made was to come over to Gillig. Perfect. Thank you so much, Christy. Very good information. So we'll move over to Winnie Turner. Um, I just want to let everyone know we are running a few minutes late. Not a problem. We'll cut into the employer rooms, but definitely if you want more information about the employers, please join their rooms. Um, We've put a lot of pressure on them with only four to five minutes, but uh, let's go with Joel. Thank you. We'll make it quick. Um, my name is Joel Diaz. I grew up here in the Bay Area. I graduated from Fresno State in 1999. I have a degree in construction management. Um, I actually started with White Turner as an intern, and over the last 20 years, I've worked my way up to a vice president position, um, and I currently run one of our operating groups here in the Bay Area. So with that, Jeremy, if you're on, I'll turn it over to you. And you can probably go to the next slide too. Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy Lopez. I'm a project manager with Whiting Turner. Uh, I've been with the company for 15 years and uh, straight out of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo that's where I graduated as a civil engineer. Um, next slide please. Whiting Turner has been around for a long time, uh, 111 years now. Uh, we are a private, privately owned company, general contractor. Um, and we do work all over the nation. We have offices, uh, you know, from Baltimore up to Portland, down to San Diego. So we cover the entire United States for the most part. Um, and we, we have no debt. We're privately owned. Again, uh, I'm a stockholder myself, Joel as well. Um, we have about 4,000 employees nationwide. And um, 
we are looking for people that want to build, people that are interested in building some of these uh, these great looking buildings that are out there. I'll show some at the end of our slide deck. And um, if you can go to the next slide, please. We do work for a very, very diverse range of clients. As you guys can see on the slide here, um, we don't focus on any one particular sector. We go where our clients lead us and we try to take care of our clients uh, to the utmost. 110% of our efforts go into making sure they're happy that they're wanting to come back and use Whiting Turner uh, for the next project. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, here's some of our stats. Won't spend too long here, but we are generally speaking in the top five in the United States as far as general contractors are concerned. And then we rank very highly in, in a very, you know, there's a few other categories that aren't on here, but we, uh, we typically rank in the top five uh, nationwide. Next slide, please. So for Whiting Turner, our, you know, our career path uh, generally is, is within two, uh, you know, two positions. Generally speaking, we have a project engineer and a field engineer. Uh, and you can think of them as a, you know, as a, as a partnership, a true 50-50 partnership. Uh, we, we field engineers go on to become superintendents, and I was a project engineer uh, and have gone on to be a project manager. And we work out on the job site. We're out boots on the ground. You're in a job site office together, both the project engineer, project managers, as well as your field engineers and your superintendents. And we're working hand in hand to manage the construction job sites. Um, we do, you know, collectively between field engineering and project engineering, we do all the work that's needed from contracts to schedules uh, to safety to quality control checks. Um, and so we, we, again, run the gamut from the beginning, the inception of a project, all the way through to the completion of it. And we don't have a, we don't have specific departments that we operate within. We actually uh, do all the work in house, whether it be estimating, whether it be scheduling. Um, we manage that from start to finish. We don't have again separate departments. Uh, we that allows us to really take ownership and to uh, have that self, you know, fulfilling pride of of accomplishment when we get done with a beautiful building that our clients uh, have. Uh, have contracted with us to build. Uh, we also, you know, we really are a career company. Uh, we don't just hire for a specific project or because we got busy. We don't lay off people for lack of work. Uh, we didn't lay off anybody in the recession in 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, obviously with the pandemic and the, the current state of everything as well, it's very similar to the recession back then and we've taken the same approach. Um, from our leadership all the way down to an entry-level position. Um, we have been just plugging, plugging forward, moving forward, and um, in the midst of this, uh, making the, the proper, um, you know, safety as well as, uh, you know, well-being, mental health of all of our employees to make sure that uh, we are going to come out stronger on the, on the outside of this uh, once we get past this uh, pandemic. Next slide, please. Here's a couple quick descriptions of what I mentioned for project engineers, what we're looking for. Um, really any engineering discipline, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, civil engineer, all possess the capabilities of what we look for in our employees. Um, next slide, please. The field engineering side um, as well, we same engineering disciplines, but also uh, we find that some of the trades people, somebody that might have been in the carpenters union or that may have worked, um, again, more hands-on, um, are really good fits for superintendents, uh, you know, career within Whiting Turner. And again, you'll see the descriptions there. We can talk further about it. I know i am cut it short here. And then uh, last slide is uh, about our internship program. And, you know, we are hiring interns as well. Um, and that's usually a three month summer internship is typically what we look for. And it's a great way for both uh, you guys as uh, job seekers and us as employer to uh, really get a feel for um, each other and to see if it's the right fit and what you would want to be doing long term. Uh, we have a bunch of other slides, but I'm going to be respectful of time. So uh, we'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you, Joel, for uh, that presentation. We'll move on to Dignity Health. So we have Darren.
Can everybody hear me? Hello. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, my, my name is uh, Darren Green. I'm the I'm a division manager of talent acquisition for Dignity Health. I've been with Dignity Health for about two years, uh, and as a division manager, my responsibilities are to oversee the recruitment uh, staffing pretty much at all levels except for executive levels um, for the Bay Area, which includes San Francisco, Redwood City, and Santa Cruz, as well as the North State, which is Redding, Mount Shasta, and um, uh, Red Bluff, which is up north. You can go to the next slide. Next slide. Uh, I want to talk about Dignity Health and its transition uh, uh, with uh, co to become Common Spirit. So in 2019, Dignity Health and, and Catholic Healthcare Initiative merged to form Common Spirit Health. So right now we're operating 142 hospitals and more than 700 care sites in 21 different states. Next slide. Uh, so this created a nationwide network of hospitals and care clinics from California all the way to Pennsylvania. Um, Common Spirit uh, is a single healthcare organization formed by Catholic Healthcare Initiative and Dignity, again. Uh, and uh, Common Spirit Health it will perform most of the healthcare operation functions uh, on behalf of collaboration with the CHI and Dignity Health. Next slide. So being in 21 states now makes uh, Common Spirit Health, uh, again, which is uh, Dignity Health and, and, and Catholic Healthcare Initiative, we have the largest faith-based hospital organization in the United States, and you can see the different states we're in. Next slide. Uh, our mission uh, at Common Spirit Health, as we, continue, as we Dignity Health transition to Common Spirit Health, um, we, we make the healing presence of known in our world by improving the health of the people we serve, especially those who are vulnerable, while we advance social justice for all. Our vision is have a healthier future for all, inspired by faith, driven by innovation, and powered by our humanity. Next slide. Uh, we have four, five core values. We have more than five, but these are our five core values that we talk about. Compassion. Uh, inclusion, uh, integrity, excellence, and collaboration. Uh, with compassion, we, they care with listening, empathy, and love, accompany and comfort those in need of healing. With inclusion, we celebrate each person's gift and voice, and we respect the dignity of all. With integrity, we inspire trust through honesty and demonstrate courage in the face of inequity. And with excellence, we serve, the full, we serve with fullest passion, creativity, and stewardship. We exceed expectations of others and ourselves. In collaboration, we commit to the power of working together. We build and nurture meaningful relationships. Next slide. Uh, as far as our benefits package, um, we, have both, we have medical, dental, and vision plans. We have a pension plan. Um, as well as a 403B. We have tuition, tuition assistance programs, uh, PTO paid time off and paid holidays. We have flexible health care spending accounts and then other additional uh, optional employee benefits as well. Next slide. Here are some of our career opportunities. Uh, we have some clinical opportunities and we have non-clinical opportunities. Uh, and they, they range from everything from the business side all the way, again, to the medical side. And you can see that some of the differences in some of the, the clinical and the non-clinical, as well as on the common spirit side, we have mostly the business and marketing and management side on the common spirit side. And we do have uh, a common spirit office that's located in San Francisco, as well as our main office. Hey, Darren, I think your sound cut out there. I think your microphone okay. cut out. Uh, I can hear you now. There you go. Oh, you can hear me now. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so uh, I was saying that on, our, on, on the Common Spirit side, we, and we have a Common Spirit office in San Francisco, but our corporate office for Common Spirit is in Chicago. Uh, and um, we have all kinds of business, marketing, management-type positions 
with the Common Spirit corporate offices as well. Next slide. Next slide. Um, I'm sorry, go back to the next slide. So for Common Spirit Careers, you can go to www.commonspiritcareers. Uh, for Dignity Health Careers, you can go to dignityhealthcareers.org. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. So um, we have one last employer, Rambus. Catherine, if, if you could quickly give us a quick introduction and then we'll move on to the uh, employer rooms, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Absolutely. And I don't have any slides, so I am going to be able to save some time. Rambus is a Sunnyvale company that has been around for 30 years. We are the premier silicon IP provider that makes data faster. We started with lighting at first, LED lighting, and then they went to IP licensing. And they've been extremely successful with that, that they realized they need to create IP products. And that's what we are now doing. And we have been growing by leaps and bounds. We are a smaller boutique company. We have roughly about 700 employees. We are worldwide. And um, we cover AI, machine learning, data center, automotive, government, IOT among some of the markets. And we have customers like Cadence and Intel, Synopsys, um, Broadcom, you name it. Any, pretty much any semiconductor company. Um, we have actually made plans during, just before the holidays to move our location. And because of the pandemic, that is on hold. The office is waiting for us to move, but we're all working remotely now. Every one of us in the company, in each office, some people do go in and they do have to get permission in order to go in, but it's working beautifully. And Rambus, just to show how they really value their employees, they actually are offering spring breaks to all of us employees and contractors which is fabulous. They give you an extended weekend, Friday and Monday. They, it's not a constant. They will announce when the next one's going to be. We just had one two weeks ago, which is marvelous. Um, so we've had our move. Interns right now, um, we have staffed up all of our interns except for one. And that is for my cryptography organization. I'm not sure if that's still going to come to fruition, but it's there if anybody has any interest or has any type of background within ASIC engineering with knowledge of cryptography. Um, right now, we are getting very active with diversity. The company hasn't thought about diversity. We do, as a recruiter for the company, I always think outside the box, but we now, between my manager and myself, we have put a diversity program together. And probably in the next month to two months, we're going to outline our training for managers and really get them to understand the importance of looking at diversity and hiring as such. Um, what else can I tell you about the company? We hire engineers, legal. Right now I'm looking for legal counsel. I get finance openings. Sales is huge within the company and sales is on the East Coast. It's in Europe and it also is here in the Bay Area. Right now I'm hoping to be making an offer to a senior sales manager that has just completed his interviews. Um, and what else can I tell you? Gosh, I feel like I know the company like the back of my hand. It's the environment is warm. It's welcoming. Everybody takes whoever is new, whether they're in their organization or not, they take them under their wing to make sure that they know who to go to, where to go to for any questions or concerns that they have. Our benefits are phenomenal with the company and the um, orientation that we have addressing all of the benefits 
is just terrific. I can't say we pay for 100% family and employee, but it's very reasonable. Um, right. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. I, I will need to move Got on it. from here. Um, <laughs> okay. Perfect, thank you so much. Henry, if you could go to the next slide really quick. Um, closing thoughts. Thank you everyone for joining for this first hour. Um, uh, I put up a five minute break, but we'll try to move as fast as we can. Uh, a few quick notes. Um, I, I'm pasting over and over again in the chat the two links you need. Um, the first link is tinyurl.com slash hire together zoom. Uh, that'll pull up a PDF with all of the individual zoom links for each employer. Um, the second link is tinyurl.com backslash hire together resume. That is where you can submit resumes. We encourage you to pick the employers of your choice and visit their rooms, but definitely if you don't get the chance to visit the room, submit your resume, get in touch with that recruiter, with that representative, and you can circle back with them at any time. So thank you everyone for joining. Please remember to be courteous and professional. Um, employers and the moderators reserve the right to remove you um, if you are behaving inappropriately. But thank you so much on behalf of Ohlone College, Bay Area Council, Bay Area Community College Consortium, and Silicon Valley Leadership Group. Thank you for joining today. Um, please go to the employer rooms. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, but again, the links are in the chat. Um, thank you all for joining. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. And this is Thank Karen. You. I'm going to keep this webinar open for a few minutes if anyone is having troubles getting into the rooms. Uh, just go to the links that Harsh Keep listed. I'm uh, looking for good vibes, and we think you all will do amazing things. Thank you all. Thank you.